Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. I just finished um, videoing and unboxing for this month's Box of the Month, so you'll want to check out that video after you finish this one. This video is part of a video hop for Not Too Shabby. Um, the hashtag for this one is hashtag into as lots of love. So all the things you're going to see in the hop today are going to be all about basically about Valentine's Day and about love. This is going to be so, so, so pretty. So anyway, those stamps that I decided I was going to work with out of the kit, um, out of the box of the month, is this one. It is called XOXO. It's got this cute little girl and this little boy and all these fun sentiments. So I'm going to stamp out some things and then decide what I'm going to do on the card. There's so many different ideas that are going through my head all at once. You know what I mean? So we're going to just see where this one takes us. I'm going to start off with stamping and embossing the little girl image in some Versifying Claire Nocturne ink. So I'm just going to stamp that down and then I'm going to add clear embossing powder from WOW over the top and then we can heat that up until it's nice and shiny. I like doing this when it comes to black ink because it makes it look like black embossing. So now I'm just going to add some color to this image. I'm not going to do anything really fancy. I'm just going to use pretty much two colors for each thing and blend everything together. Starting off with a darker color around the edges where it would be kind of rounded and leaving it lighter in the center. So it's kind of a little bit of a highlight and it gives the illusion that everything is curved. Then I'm going to come in with a mid-tone. I've decided because the light is so much lighter than the darkest that I need something in the middle so that we don't have those harsh lines. And then I'll come back in again with the, not that one, yes, with the <laughs> MT2 to kind of go over the last of it and blend those together and lighten it up again in the center a little bit. I think that'll look good. If not, it's only paper and I can go back and do another one. Using FS1 to add a little color to her face. I'm going to add a little bit of darker color right around her bangs, right where her bangs would be over, overshadowing, and a little bit on the sides of her face, just to make it a little bit more dimensional. And then I'll come back in with the FS1 and even everything out. For her cheeks, I'm going to use CR1. And I may decide that it needs to be a little bit pinker. If I do, I can come back in and go over that. But I think that's going to work out. And for her hair, I think I'm going to just use some different shades of brown. I'll make her a brunette. So now I am going to add a sentiment or two on here. I've already picked out a couple of sentiments, got them in place, and I'm going to use some, I don't even know how old this is or where I got it. I think someone gave me some embossing powder ages ago. It is a red glitter and the swatch is probably two years old. Anyway, we're going to try that one out so I can use up some of the stuff that I've already got in my stash that I haven't been. But I also want to make sure I get plenty of color. So I'm going to be using cranberry fruit 
cranberry fizz from Catherine Pooler for the red. So let's go ahead and stamp that down. And yes, I know it's gonna stain my stamps, but that is totally fine. Probably need a second, oh, almost don't need a second coat, but let's go ahead and add another one anyway. This is so pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna add some embossing powder over the top and we'll heat that up until it's all nice and melty. So I made some glitter cardstock using the um, <laughs> yeah, the glitter embossing powder just because it was out. I mean, I haven't used this in forever. I thought I'm going to go ahead and use some. So I went ahead and cut some out and then I thought, you know, that would be really nice for a mat. And then I thought, no, I think I want to do a frame and do a shaker. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've cut out a frame using two of my notched um, corners frames dies from Spellbinders one of my favorite nested die sets right now. And I went ahead and did the same thing out of a couple of pieces of fun foam. Now the fun foam, it does get squished, so it's gonna take a little bit of time for it to pop back up. Um, I am gonna go ahead and glue those together and I think I'm gonna leave it overnight so that it has time to batten back up before I make my shaker. Next I'm going to assemble my my frame here. I've cut out another piece of acetate using the larger of the frames and I'm gonna put that down onto first onto the this is the glitter piece. I'm also trying it to contain a little bit of the glitter that has flaked off a little bit probably because I made a mess. Um, that, a little bit of that embossing powder is on my desk so I'm using paper towel to kind of try to help to protect from this new panel. Go ahead and put that down. I'm going to let that sit for a second to dry because it is glue. And then I can put my foam frame that is the double thickness that I glued together yesterday on top of that. So next, let's go ahead and add some bits to go into our shaker cart. This that I've got here is just some um, table scatter that I've got from Target that I've been using a little bit here and there over the last like three years, I think. It's been a while. So I'm using some of that and I've also got some little clay bits don't even know if I've opened these yet that I got from Target probably a year and a half ago too. So I'm just going to add some of those, just a bunch of little hearts. And watch, I'll probably overfill this one too. My last shaker, I think I put a little bit too much, but that's okay. All the fun bits are awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to add some liquid glue to the foam parts on my window. And I'm gonna have to set all of this off to the side to dry. The, that's one of the downsides of using um, fine foam instead of you know, foam tape. And that's because you have to wait a while for everything to dry because you're using your liquid glue. You don't want it to, you don't want to move it around once you put the bits in just to be on the safe side, right? But you can also make sure that you've got a completely solid well because you die cut that shape out. There we go. So I'm gonna put this back under my acrylic block and let it dry for a bit. Now I'm gonna use the rest of the red glitter paper that I made and add a piece of pattern paper from inside the kit to the back of that. Uh, I wanna make sure that I don't go too far on the edge. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add some liquid glue around the edges. I cut this pa panel down to four by, no, three and three quarters by five so that I could have a little bit of the red showing around the edges from the glitter cardstock and a oh, glitter handmade glitter cardstock anyway, and also be able to see the white border around the edges of my panel from my card base because I like that little bit of card base to show. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. And once that's dried, I can 
trim this up a little bit and mount everything down to my card base. And that is going to finish up this card. I think it turned out super, super cute. Be sure to check out the other videos in our um, hop to see all the additional extra um, inspiration because everybody's going to have a ton for you to see because I just love all the projects. Anyway, you guys see all of those. Um, check out this playlist to see some more videos where I've been using some not too shabby shop products. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.